cannot be used for nefarious purposes to develop nuclear weapons. Therefore, it was created in 1975 just because of Indian reaction. And interestingly, the waivers have been given in this group just because of India. So it's interesting and strange. It, it, they are given to India, but exactly. at the behest of the United exactly, States. Exactly, behest of the United States. And a couple of things. Pakistan's position on FMT is principal position. And uh, some states or some actors, some organizations are blaming Pakistan that Pakistan is alone in its position. But it is not the case. Factually, if we speak NAM, non-aligned movement, which is a representative of 118 countries, in their 2007 statement, they stated that NAM wants a treaty which can be non-proliferation and disarmament and which can also cover the pre-existing stocks of fissile material. And uh, there are four to five groups in conference on disarmament of various states. And there is a group of G21. There are 35 members of this group. group and these 35 members, most of them are of the view that the treaty should be a treaty which can cover the existing stocks of fissile material. And uh, Pakistan is not alone in it. So many states, other are of the view that pre-existing stocks should be considered in it. And uh, what was the logic of FMCT? If you see that FMCT means only future ban on the future productions. P5, permanent members of Security Council and India is in favor of FMCT because United States and the B5 believe that they have already stopped production of fissile material. So and they have already uh, acquired ample, acquired, so exactly, they don't need any more. Sufficient fissile material. And uh, therefore, they don't feel that there is a need for further production. Therefore, they want to contain these states, especially Pakistan. As far as India is concerned, they have given extra privilege, extra leverage to India by Indo-US nuclear deal. And interestingly, Mr. Obama, President of the United States, who's champion of, who is so-called champion of this non-proliferation regime, he himself came in India and stated that they want to give India permanent membership of NSG, MTCR, Missile Technology Control Regime, Australia Group, and Vezinar Arrangement. These are arrangements, uh, these are regimes which deal in the export control technology and missile technology regime. So these are clear violations of international norms, international efforts which are moving the world towards disarmament. This will further block the, this process. And uh, the BMD system, which India has, is trying to acquire, it would be a fatal and it would be disastrous. What, what is BMD? Ballistic Missile Defense System, which India is introducing in the region. It would create problems for the region because it will give Indians a false hope, false confidence that they can beat their enemy, they, that they can initiate war, and with the help of this system, they can counter, they can contain enemy attacks. Uh, and uh, I would like to tell you what BMD actually is. Okay. Well, Ballistic Missile Defense System is a technology. It is a uh, defensive technology, but, it, but defensive technology has to be more offensive. BMD actually is that if your enemy launches a missile, then with the help, and you have got long-range tracking radar. Your radars will detect that, yes, an enemy uh, an, uh, missile has been launched from your enemy's territory. And then uh, you will uh, launch an, in, uh, an in, a missile, which is known as interceptor, in order to, kill, in order to hit and kill the uh, enemy's missile, which is coming into Like the during the Gulf War, the uh, U.S. was using Patriot, and the yeah, Israelis have exactly, developed the arrow. Exactly, exactly. But this is a very complex and very expensive technology, which Pakistan cannot, at the time, afford to uh, acquire it. And so the, this very basic concept to understand ballistic missile defense system is that to uh, uh, kill a bullet with the help of a bullet. This is a very precise definition of ballistic missile uh, defense system that you can say. And uh, apart from that, India, uh, India has got a number of uh, ballistic missiles which are Agni and Prithri. Then it has got NAG which is an uh, anti-tank uh, missile. Then it has, has also got Brahmos which, uh, whose uh, status is not clear at the moment whether it's under construction or whether it is, it has been constructed. And then we have no, got. In fact, Brahmos has already been inducted into the Indian Army. Now they are developing the aerial version as well as the sea launched versions. Yes. And it's a joint production between, uh, between Russia, Russia and, and, and India. And India. Thus the name Brahmos, Brahmos Bra for Brahmaputra, yeah. yes. River, and uh, Mos for Moscow. Moscow. Exactly. Th thank you. Uh, b just before that, I would like you, Naveed, to tell me what is the reg regional security challenge which we face today? And there are a couple of, rather more than a couple of challenges to the region before, because Pakistan is so much concerned and uh, those, are, those challenges are not because Pakistan is highlighting those challenges. Those challenges are very much clear. 
First of all, as Rida has already mentioned, Indian Coal Star Doctrine. India introduced this doctrine in 2004 and the purpose of this doctrine is to initiate a war in a very short time against Pakistan under the nuclear cover. They believe that they can hit Pakistan without exploring or without crossing the threshold limits. But there's another aspect to this uh, Cold Start Doctrine because you see in 2001 December there was an attack on the Indian parliament, Indian parliament and India made a pretext and launched its forces at the Pakistan border. It wanted to go into an all-out war and a standoff continued for uh, something like 10 months. Ultimately India blinked first, it had to go back. But the criticism was that its land forces, they took a lot of time for their mobilization. So the Cold Start Doctrine is supposed to be like a, uh, you Quick see, and swift operations like, like operation. the German Blitzkrieg. Exactly. Yes. And exactly. they want to attack before the international diplomatic Diplomacy. maneuvers exactly. come into and place. And intervenes into the conflict. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So please go ahead. So as you have already mentioned about the Cold Start Doctrine, that was their failure. Their strategic depth became their failure. But our lack of strategic depth is our opportunity, our strength. So we can move our maneuver, our troops within a couple of days onto our, on our border. Indians can't. Therefore, they plan that they can introduce a new doctrine through which instead, instead of taking four to five weeks, they can move their troops to the border areas and they can launch an attack on Pakistan. And uh, interestingly, without understanding that it is a nuclear region, it is a nuclearization, nuclearization has come over the region and it would be a disaster for the region. And they already know that Pakistan's nuclear threshold is very limited, very low. And we can, by understanding these things, I, I don't think so that Indians are doing a good thing and they are, instead they are creating problems for the region, for the humanity, for the 100 and 20 billion people of the region. Well, and India is trying to uh, connect subconventional to conventional, uh, regardless of the fact that in Pakistan may co connect conventional to nuclear conflict. Now, one more thing I would like to highlight here is that one of, another challenge that Pakistan faces at the moment is that India is actually going global. Now, India has uh, aimed to uh, acquire a comprehensive space program, and it is also as a part of its ballistic missile defense program, it is trying to acquire ASATs, which are anti-satellite weapons. Uh, now, they are land-based weapons, and they can be used and launched into space in order to destroy a satellite. So tomorrow, if India thinks that you are using your satellite in order to spy on India or in order to uh, gather or in order to uh, intervene into their command, command control system, India can uh, easily launch a uh, missile and destroy your satellite. And that will not only give you a conventional uh, hit back, but also your media will be uh, also get affected by that. Right. So, but there's another player in the region, a very major player. So when we talk about security challenges, in fact, uh, we must take the role of China. What is your opinion? Well, uh, China also feels insecure uh, because of Indian acquisition. It has got arms deals, it has got uh, ballistic missile defense system. In China does not have a ballistic missile defense system till now, but last year it also tested its ballistic missile defense system in order to uh, attain this. And China also has ASATs, but because India perceives threat from uh, China, it is uh, acquiring ASATs, and China perceives threat from India, it is acquiring BMD. So this is a very triangular uh, situation that goes into the, this South Asian region. And Pakistan and China strategic cooperation, India is very comfortable, is very uncomfortable uh, with uh, bo both of their uh, strategic cooperation. So India. Uh, is, is getting support and technological and financial support from uh, USA but, but, and Israel. But a question arises, what is China's approach towards FMCT? Uh, well, China is of the favor of FMCT because China already has uh, enough amount of fissile material that uh, which would support its nuclear program. So China has no problem with FMCT. It, it is uh, going for FMCT, but it is going for it, but it uh, strongly uh, uh, supports PEROS, which is prevention of arms in outer space. Because as uh, U.S. is blocking this uh, Peros, because the U.S. believes that it is its right and it is and it needs uh, weapons in space in order to enhance its national security, uh, whereas China, China and Russia, they both perceive threat from U.S.A. and therefore they want Peros should be there. It should be made a legal document so that no weaponization of space should be done. Because uh, if, if you recall, in the uh, early 90s the U.S. spent a lot of money on its Star Wars program. Yes, exactly, Star Wars program. Uh, you wanted to add something. Sir, I just wanted to add about the Chinese, Chinese perspective on it. Uh, in 1999, China's blog proceedings in CD on FMCT negotiations because China highlighted that the other CD agenda items should be equally treated. And what are those agenda items? Those are PEROS, which we have already discussed, PEROS, uh, NS, and NSA, Negative Security Assurance, and, and Nuclear Disarmament. In 1999, when China blocked 
negotiations on FMCT, they pointed out that ne parallel negotiations on PEROS should also be initiated so that PEROS prevention of arms race in outer space can be formalized and prevent and uh, weaponization and uh, nuclearization or other militarization of space can be contained. So Chinese are in favor of PEROS and they are more interested in PEROS instead of FMCT. And uh, a couple of more things that there are few countries like uh, Canada, like uh, Germany, Australia and Japan, they are of the view that negotiations on the FMT or FMC should be started in the conference on disarmament and the issue of the scope, whether it should be arms control, whether it should be disarmament treaty or whether it should be non-proliferation treaty can be ne discussed, negotiated while the negotiation process has been started. But Pakistan along with so many other states believe and think and state urge that uh, it, it isn't the case. Pakistan believe that negotiations on this treaty can be started and should be started. We are in favor of it, but the scope should be discussed before. What should be discussed and what should not be discussed. The mandate of the treaty should be clear. And uh, therefore, Pakistan is blocking it and Pakistan is not violating any international rule. And uh, many people okay. in Pakistan... So, Rida, yes. what do you think is the way forward for Pakistan? Sir, well, actually, if you see that India has been given a very uh, discriminatory status vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan. So what we want is that we want equal respect we want equal status. Pakistan has got nuclear weapons. Pakistan has got military systems. We have one of the world's best safety and security model. We uh, have expertise in, rep uh, in uh, reprocessing, in, uh, in uranium enrichment. So why aren't we getting all the opportunities wh uh, what India is getting? So that is what we want. One last thing I would like to add is that we have given enough to our nuclear weapons program. So now it is our time that we get benefit from, a civ the, from the civilian side of our nuclear weapons, uh, nuclear program. Sir, we have got our youth. Why aren't we using our youth? We have got millions, we have got hundreds of people who are MSc in physics, MSc, MSc in chemistry, in nuclear science and technology. If we use our youth and we send them abroad to get the technology, to acquire knowledge, and to benefit uh, our country in the civilian side, in the civilian sector of our state, uh, which would uh, uh, add into our energy, uh, we are, are, are already uh, facing energy crisis. So nuclear, in, uh, nuclear in, uh, industry should be enhanced and it should be used in the civilian side uh, in order to uh, come over our energy crisis and also to uh, okay. uh, ultimately uh, contribute right. into the global economy. Right. So viewers, with that we come to the end of this very intense debate and it was like a whiff of fresh air because it shows that our youth is not only fully cognizant of the threat that is surrounding us, it has also put its mind to use and is ready to present us with solutions. Solutions which will be beneficial for Pakistan, not only in becoming a more robust and healthy state, but also to overcome our energy problem. And it shows also that we have senior elements in our youth and the time has come for my generation to pass on the baton to the youth because there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I would like to thank you, Naveed. I would like to thank you, Rida. Thank, thank you, you very much for joining us. And viewers, do watch us and hope to see you next week, inshallah. Allah Hafiz.